Hi, I'm Kena. Welcome to my kitchen. Today we're going to be um, making some snacks. Um, some healthier snacks. I know I love a good cookie just like you do, but this today I'm going to show you how to make um, satisfy that sweet tooth and uh, be making some good healthy snacks that give you some vitamins and nutrients and things like that. So the first thing I'm going to start with is I'm going to call it... Um, I was thinking about a name, I'm not really sure. I'm getting the um, structure of my recipe from a book, which by the way, I highly recommend this book if you guys are interested in really healthy snacks. Um, she calls it Green Glow Spirulina Balls, but I'm changing it up just a little bit, but I'm gonna follow some of this. So I'll be talking about the different ingredients. Um, let me just change that right there. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna use is sesame seeds. Sesame seeds are really high in calcium. These are hulled, you can get unhulled. The unhulled actually would be a little bit higher in nutrients for you. These are the hulled. So uh, the unhulled would taste a little bit more bitter, but you're gonna be adding something, a sweetener to it anyway. So I'm just out of my unhulled, so that's why I'm using this. Um, also, uh, this is kind of a quick, if you don't have a grinder and you can't grind your own sesame seeds, then you can buy tahini. It's called tahini, which is just basically ground sesame seeds. So this is going to be pastier than I can get my sesame seeds grounded. So I'm going to actually mix where she just calls for just grinding up your sesame seeds in your coffee grinder. So I'm gonna do both and I'll do that here in just a minute. And then the next thing is carob powder. And I don't know if anybody is familiar with carob powder, probably most of you are. Um, a lot of people use it in place of chocolate, which I don't think a real chocolate connoisseur would appreciate that because carob does not taste like chocolate. It gives the same color, it's the same maybe texture, but it's definitely not the same taste. However, um, carob powder is really high in uh, different nutrients and so I eat it more for the health benefits. It has uh, zero caffeine where uh, chocolate has caffeine. Some people struggle with caffeine or can't, shouldn't have it. So I'm just going to read to you out of uh, Sue Gregg's book on desserts about carob. Uh, the carob tree is also known as the locust tree because John the Baptist ate locusts and wild honey. Carob is often called St. John's bread and it's nutritious. Carob is a legume, so a bean, comes from a, like a bean tree, and thus its protein content um, complements the protein of whole grain flours. It's a good source of pectin, which is valuable dietary fiber, and it's high in calcium, and we're always looking for calcium. Carob contains 92 milligrams of calcium per three tablespoons, four times that of an equivalent amount of chocolate, so it's a lot higher in calcium than chocolate. Um, in addition, carob contains a mere 0.4 grams of fat per three tablespoons, as compared to the equivalent of a one-ounce chocolate, which has 14.6 grams of fat. So, if you're looking to cut fat out of your life, carob would be maybe a substitute that you, <laughs> Scrappy is now drinking. Go outside, Scrappy, shoo. <laughs> so, okay, so I will add carob to our treat. And then the next thing I'm going to add, okay, she calls for agave syrup, sweetener, and I don't know if you've ever heard of agave. It actually comes, I think, from a cactus, and I got this at Trader Joe's. I think you can even buy it here in town. Um, and I like agave, okay. A lot of people use honey. Honey is excellent. I have some sensitive. Oh, sorry, <laughs> hit the thing. I have some sensitivities to honey, so I don't use honey. My kids love it. I have it, and I maybe put it in things that they're going to eat. But I don't eat honey. But I highly recommend it if you don't have any sensitivities. But what I love, what I'm addicted to, is brown rice syrup. It is delicious. It is really thick. It's thicker than honey. It's real sticky. It's heaven on a spoon. You should try it. It's really good. I mean, if you just want a snack, just get a spoonful of brown rice syrup. It's delicious. I have not found this anywhere. Um, not in any grocery stores. I have to order it. Um, I order from a co-op, so I get a lot of my foods from a food co-op, and then they just bust it here for me. So I'll be using this as my sweetener as opposed to the ag agave syrup. Okay, and then the last thing I'm going to add, now she has a couple different ingredients like spirulina, which I, I will have it. Um, spirulina is in this little mixture. This is a mixture of like 28 different herbs and I purchased this from uh, the bulk herb store. I think I've mentioned it on previous programs. Um, and she says here, and this is a little, I love the bulk herb store. This is the little lady that runs it. Shoshana is her name, but uh, this is great. They're out of Tennessee. 
um, all kinds of different herbs and stuff if you're interested in, in herb. Tons of education too on her website, so go check that out. But anyways, uh, her green drink mix has 28 different herbs that contain a balance of nutrition that tops any multivitamin. And so I prefer not to take vitamins in a pill form. I'm not saying you don't, I mean, talk to your doctor and stuff, but I just prefer more of a food, feed myself with food, get nutrients that way, rather than, you know, something that's been synthesized or whatever. So anyway, so this has spirulina in it, all kinds of stuff, you can look it up, tons of stuff. I do add some bilberry, I do add some extra stuff to it, but this is what I'm going to add to my little herb balls, we'll just call it that, herb balls. And then the final thing that I'm gonna add that she doesn't have in the recipe, she has bee pollen. Again, I don't do bee stuff um, just because of a sensitivity. I'm gonna add chia seed. Now, if anybody of you, if any of you, excuse me, don't know what chia seed, it is worth your while to know what it is. Um, I'm just gonna read to you on the little label here. It's a good source of fiber and protein. It has 15 times more magnesium than broccoli. It has 30, uh, percent more antioxidants than blueberries. So that's something. Twice the potassium in a banana, six times more calcium than milk, and it contains rare antioxidants. Isn't that funny? They never tell you. I would think, okay, that's kind of suspect. But um, anyway, so chia, high in fiber. Um, you don't have to grind them. There are so many different recipes, and in the future, I'd like to do a couple other, like making pudding with chia. You can make, put it in a smoothie, but if you don't purchase chia, I want you to start. It is so good, so good for your digestion, um, good bowel function, that's all important to all of us. Um, definitely eat chia. You can put it on anything. You can sprinkle it on your toast. You can probably don't put it in your coffee, but. Um, if you eat oatmeal in the morning or cereal or a thousand different ways to use chia. So definitely start getting that. Okay, so now I'm gonna start. What I'm gonna start with is my tahini. It's a little dry because I poured the oil off. So I'm gonna have to dig it out. And I'm gonna put roughly half a cup. I'm not gonna be exact here. I'm just gonna dump until I feel like it looks right. Sometimes that works and sometimes that doesn't. So I'm hoping today it works. I don't really want the oil anyway, because um, I'm not gonna make, you know, peanut butter toast or whatever with it. I'm gonna already, I'm gonna add a liquid so it's gonna soften it. Okay, that's probably a little bit more than half a cup, but that's fine. I'll just put this back here. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my sesame seeds and I'm going to grind them in my grinder. So this would be kind of loud just for a minute. I'll just fill it up. Um, this is probably a little bit more than a half a cup, but I fill it up not quite to the top of my grinder. I like to grind it until, I don't know if you heard it stop like that where it stops moving, that begins to release the oils. And so that's what you want. You want to grind it until it pretty much stops. And then I'm gonna dump it out right here. And you can see how it looks. Um, it's getting thick, it's clumping together. That's what you want. So I'm gonna put that in there and I love the smell of ground, I think I'll need that, of ground sesame seeds. It's a really good smell. Put that over there. So those are two things. And now I'm gonna do half a cup of carob. Carob powder, and um, carob powder, where can you get carob powder? I don't know if you go out of town, I just spilled some um, at all. I think Kokomo, uh, there's a sunspot in Kokomo, I think they carry it. Um, or Kroger might, you can look. I get it through my co-op. That's not quite half a cup. Add a little bit more. So you can see how it looks just like it's a little lighter in color maybe than um, cocoa powder. If any of you have those little flies flying around, they're really bad this time of year. Very annoying. Okay, so there's that. 
and then the next thing is going to be half a cup of our sweetener. Now watch this pour out, you're gonna love it. Okay, it is so pretty, and wait, oh, it smells so good. I think it smells better than honey. So I'm gonna pour in about half a cup. I don't want a bug. Okay, maybe that was more than half a cup, maybe not. A little extra, never hurt anybody. Okay. Oh, mm. okay, so I cheated. So good. It is the best, I'm gonna wash my hands. Sticky, sticky. Okay, the next thing is I'm going to add two tablespoons, three tablespoons of this and two tablespoons of my chia. But really you can play with this and make it, make it yours. You can add anything you want, you can leave things out. Mine's a little complicated you might think, you don't want it that complicated, so just do the first three ingredients, it's fine. It says on here a serving is one tablespoon. So that's only two tablespoons, so I'm really not getting a lot. So probably if I was gonna do this for myself, I'd add a little bit more chia. Put this back here. And then I'm gonna do three tablespoons of this. This is my herb mixture from the bulk herb store that I showed you about, the 28 different herbs. Um, the recipe calls for just spirulina which is wonderful. Spirulina is like a blue-green algae. It is comes from the ocean. It's gonna be really high in um, chlorophyll, um, super high in protein. So many reasons to um, begin to look into consuming chlor uh, spirulina. It's really, really good for you. Funny, I took it all through my 10th pregnancy. This is just a little anecdote for you. And um, so lots of protein, right? Protein builds your body. And so he was my biggest baby. He was almost 11 pounds. So I blame the spirulina. So you might not want to take it during pregnancy or just don't take as much as I did. And I did have him naturally. Okay, then the last thing I want to add is pink salt. So this is Himalayan salt. Remember we have, we've had conversations in the past about salt. And I have told you to get rid of your table salt and you've all done that, right? Nobody has the white, bleached, horribly processed, poisonous table salt anymore, right? It's all gone out of your house. Instead, you replace it with sea salt. If your salt does not have color, you should not have it. Don't, don't consume it, it's really, really bad for you. So this is um, processed, there's mines in the Himalayan mountains and they have just natural Mines of sea salt, or not sea salt, they call it pink salt, and it is very pink. I have um, ground it up. I don't know if you can see a crystal. This couple crystals did not get ground up. I don't know if you can see that or not in my hand right there. So I don't really want to eat a chunk of salt. So I'll just throw those out. But anyways, it smells really salty. I'm just gonna add a pinch, maybe a little bit more. Who doesn't like chocolate? with salt. Of course, it's carob and salt. I don't know if you ever get those chocolate bars that add sea salt to it. Oh, that's the best. So, but this is really good too. So Himalayan pink salt or sea salt or um, goes by all kinds of different names. I mean, there are different kinds of salt out there. Just check into it. But main thing is get the white poisonous table salt out of your house. That's just really bad for you. Okay, so this might, I might have to add a little water to it. And if I do, and if you have to, that's fine. If it's not quite as um, goopy as you want, it's gotta be able to roll into balls. That's our point, that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna turn this on, this might be kinda loud. Ah, oh, looks good. I think this is about what I want. Might add a little bit of water to it, but not much. Get what's kind of sticking. And we'll try it one more time. I'll put a cup back here for that very reason. I'm gonna add just a little bit of water, not much. That's what I'm looking for. Ooh. 
Okay. okay. Get rid of the blade. Oh, it's really nice and sticky. That's what you want. Okay. Now here it is, right here. I'll get rid of this for right now. I'm gonna take my rings off because I'm gonna roll in, into some balls and show you what I mean. I'll have, we'll do this in just a minute. Okay, um, just to keep it from sticking really bad to your hands, I just get a little bit of water when I go to roll. Some people use coconut oil or just any other kind of oil on their hands. Water works just fine. I don't see why adding extra calories. I just don't do it. I just take a pinch and I roll it like that. And then guess what I do with it? I fill this up and then I pop it in the refrigerator or the freezer. And it gets, it'll last a little longer if you're not going through them very fast. It'll last probably up to six months easy in your freezer. Um, in your refrigerator, I would consume it within three weeks because the oils can go rancid. And so you wanna, you wanna eat it before they go rancid. Okay, so you see you can make the balls any size you want. I like them a little smaller. Mm, you wanna take a good bite from it. So you don't want it so small. I mean, I guess you could pop the whole thing in your mouth. See, it's starting to stick. If it starts to stick, just get your hands wet again. And then you can make a whole bunch. So I don't think I'm gonna stand here and do this the whole time. I'll finish these up later. But um, they're really, really good. Um, they're good like this. They're just softer. And if you like the real chewy texture, I, I love the mouthfeel of something that's almost hard to, to bite into because it's so chewy. I really enjoy that. But if you don't like that or if your teeth can't handle that, then um, just stick them in the refrigerator. They won't be near um, as, as chewy, I guess. I don't really know what the word is I'm looking for, but uh, they're just delicious. So give it a go, give it a try. If you, if you can't get a hold of, of uh, this much sesame seeds, then you can go to our Kroger and just buy the tahini and you can just do the tahini and you can do the carob powder or you can do cocoa powder, it's fine. Add your sweetener, you can do honey, you can do agave and just play with it. Look for the consistency. If you have spirulina, go ahead and add some. Spirulina, just remember that spirulina comes from the ocean so it's gonna be a little fishy. So it depends on your taste there. So that's one great snack and I'm gonna finish doing these out in a little bit. Okay, so the next snack I wanted to do, and this one is super easy. Um, you're gonna love this. Dates and almonds, I'm done with that. I had a friend uh, recently send me um, a little study that had been done on almonds that people who consume almonds have less incidences of headaches. And so I know a lot of us have headaches and they have high calcium. Of course, I know calcium can help with headaches too. Also blood sugar, um, they're you know good source of protein and not a real good source of protein actually, but um, the calcium in there helps uh, I guess against headaches, I don't even know. You have to look at the study. I guess I should have been more prepared. <laughs> but anyways, um, almonds are good for your heart. I know we've read all this good stuff that's coming out about almonds, so consume almonds. 10 to 12 a day, it won't hurt you, won't make you fat. Don't worry about that. Um, just get active, they're full of really dense energy. I love almonds and I love dates. I was gonna read to you about um, dates. You know, when we think of dates, I don't know about you, but when I think of dates, I think of like a Bible food, you know? Um, dates and figs, kind of Bible-esque, um, delicious. We don't really have dates a lot here. I don't, you know, you don't like go to the store and there's dates everywhere. I mean, I don't really see it. So you kind of have to look for it. Maybe some people are more used to eating dates. I only really kind of discovered them four or five or six years ago. My favorite is the Medjool date. There's Deglet, there's all kinds of different types of dates, but to me, the most, the creamiest, the best are the medjool dates and the, naturally they're the most expensive. So they have a little seed in them. So we're just gonna make a little stuffed date. This is uh, just in a real simple, easy, I always cook on my books. So if you ever borrow a book from me, it's gonna be sticky, <laughs> sorry. So, okay, so I'm gonna just cut it open and see the little, the little seed, it's not edible. You can't eat it. 
So you can just stick a, or you can put almond butter if you don't want to, if you don't want the crunch of an almond and close that up. You can put a whole tray and these are great little party treats, stuffed dates. So you would really like this and I would take a bite, but then I would have to talk with my mouthful. So I'm not gonna. So do that. This is such an easy little snack. Um, oh, I said I was gonna read this. <laughs> Let me read this. Um, the most versatile, moist, super sweet fruit. Dates are nature's ready to eat raw candy. They're high in calories and natural sugars, fiber, iron, potassium, and phosphorus, and are a good source of B vitamins, niacin, and folic acid. They're very, very, very sweet. They're really good if you um, seed them, and also you could throw them in this mixture, and um, just for an extra stickiness, you can lessen maybe the syrup and put some dates in place of it. So I love, also you can get date sugar. I don't know if you've ever heard of date sugar. Some people use it in place of table sugar or um, in their cookies. I have tried date sugar, not a fan, but I really like these. These are delicious, so give that a go. Okay, and then my final little um, fun snack, and this would be more for kids. I look at the two snacks I just made more for adults. Kids might look at the little herb ball. <laughs> Some of my kids will eat them. Um, most of them will not. This is a mama treat. <laughs> so mamas treat yourselves. So then this final thing is definitely kid friendly. I'm going to make popsicles, easy popsicles. Let me just wipe my counter right here. Okay. Um, so if I was going to be, you know, a purist earth mother, I would definitely juice my own mixture, which I do have a juicer and I really love carrot juice and apple juice mixed together. So if I was in the mood and I wanted to go to all the trouble, I would juice it myself. Um, if you, if not, just buy your juice, whatever kind. This was on sale. I got this. This is, and by the way, we're not big juice people. It's, I think it's just, you know, extra calories that your kids don't need. I think your kids just need to drink water and my kids, excuse me, your kids, my kids just need to drink water. And I am pretty Nazi-ish about that. They just mostly just have water. Um, we do do uh, like almond milks and soy milks um, as a treat, but we, for drinks with their meals, we just do water. So I really recommend that. I don't, I think our kids are dehydrated. I don't think they get enough water. So um, I really encourage you to um, encourage your children to drink more water, but this is a treat. They come home from school or they've been outside playing and you're gonna make your own popsicles. And really you're gonna save so much money, especially if you buy your juice on sale. It stores for quite a long time. So you don't have to use it all at once. I tend to look for the sales. Not all of my children like Greek yogurt. I think it's more nutritious than just regular yogurt, um, but it's thicker. Not everybody likes the consistency of Greek yogurt. And this is this has blueberries in it. I really like this this brand right here. There's all kinds of different brands out there. Give it a go. Try it. I like Greek yogurt. I eat it uh, not regularly, but pretty often. I'm gonna do two. It's probably too much. Again, I'm not really big on. Where's my spoon? Where's my spoon? Well, excuse me. <laughs> Not really big on measuring, as you can see. I just kind of wing it and eye everything. I guess my mom taught me that. She did. She always did that. Okay, so there's one. So think of like frozen yogurt ice cream. Except have you ever, unless you buy really expensive brands, have you ever looked at the ingredients on frozen yogurt? It's terrible. There's so many chemicals and trash in it. Um, so that's why I like only natural ingredients. I'm really kind of picky. I try to be mostly picky, but you know, you, you can do what you can afford and not always can afford everything. So you just do what you can do. So I'm going to add a little bit. I'm looking for a consistency. I want it to be thick, but um, not so thick that it doesn't pour good into my mold. And plus I have eight. And with as many kids as I have, I actually have several more of these but I'm only gonna do two right now. Of course, it's, you know, it's still summer, but does it feel like summer? It's really weird. <laughs> so it's, this is probably not something that you do right now. However, my kids will eat popsicles in the winter. Uh, they love popsicles. What kid doesn't like popsicles? Okay, so this is the consistency I'm looking for. This makes such a good treat. And you can sneak in different stuff. Like if I wanted to be a real tricky mom, I'd probably put like a tablespoon of my, um, my herb mix, my 28 different herbs. And most of my kids, 
their palate is not that um, sensitive where they taste it, unless I overdo it. And I have overdone it. Like, mom, what'd you put in here? And so I have to be really tricky. So, okay, so I'm just gonna pour these in here and then they're gonna freeze right up in a couple hours. They'll have a nice little treat. And these are really good. So you can feel good about giving your kid this instead of ice cream, a bowl of ice cream on Friday nights. You know, that's a sometimes a big thing. Oh, let's go get ice cream, let's go get ice cream. Well, you can make your own homemade ice cream or you can do these kind of pops. Look, it didn't even fill up both of them. So, put it I'll have to measure next time. <laughs> okay, so then you just pop these little things on. There are so many different, I think I bought these at Target and they had a big long stick and they wouldn't fit in my refrigerator so I had to snip it off. So, and then after I did that, I thought, oh, my kids really can't hold it that well. <laughs> so anyway, it works. And then they can drink out, you know, what, what melts, that's so nice. I like this. And these were, my goodness, I don't even think they were $2 uh, per one. It was like $1.49 or something. I might have gotten it at the, at the end of the summer last year though. They might price a little bit higher at the beginning. Then you just pop it in your freezer and you're good to go. So I hope you've had fun with me today and I hope you have a great week and I will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.